Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Talk the Talk. Today I'm driving Rodney's 2007 Lotus Exiges. Now, before the cameras have come on, I've been driving this thing around for about 10 minutes. My back's already hurting. I'm already sweating. I'm already half deaf. But for some reason, I already fucking love this car. This car's all what I'm about, raw driving experience and it is amazing but we'll get into that a little bit later so this car here from factory has the toyota 1.8 liter 2zz ge engine and being the xegs it had the eaton mp62 supercharger on there now when rodney first got the car had the 260 cup tune put on it it was making a healthy 143 rear wheel kilowatts which isn't too bad considering the car only weighs 915 kilo out the box now Rodney being a true car guy that wasn't enough so he's done a lot to this car since he's got it biggest thing that he changed was a supercharger now he's got a Harrop 1320 supercharger so yes that's a 1300 cc displacement charger on a 1800 cc engine on top of that, he's upgraded the intake piping, intake manifold, downpipe and exhaust system to a Lorenny one. He's currently running a SCC ECU, running 10 pounds of boost, and what's that giving him? 201 rear wheel kilowatts. And what's 201 rear wheel kilowatts? Well, I'll show you what that is. That is a lot of fucking fun. First to second, bang. Second to third, pop. You got the instant torque with this charger as well. It feels absolutely insane. So while we're talking about upgrades, those pops and bangs are probably thanks to a high flung fuel pump as well and 740cc injectors. So you're dumping a lot more fuel in the system and between those gears, let's just do it again. I'm, like I said, I'm already in love. Woo! Love it. <laughs> so he hasn't just concentrated on upgrading the power on this thing. He's done some handling mods and also some braking mods. Like I said, this thing only weighs 915 kilos out the box, so it doesn't need a huge amount of stopping power. What he's done is upgraded the rotors, so now he's running DBA slotted rotors, and then also EBC green stuff pads. I've run the red stuff pads in my cars, they're great pads, looked up the green stuff, and that's for a bit more lighter vehicles, spirited drives, and look, that's exactly what we're doing today, so that's perfect. Handling wise, again, he's kept it simple. He's had the tow link upgrade for this car and also the bump stops. Pretty standard thing that guys do to these cars. And he's also got the Cup 260 racing coilovers. So those ones there, they're height adjustable and damper adjustable. Honestly, probably sitting a little bit low for daily use in this car, but it feels nice and solid and it's got a sexy stance as well. When I had to, I couldn't help myself. As I was saying, it's got a sexy stance as well, dropping it about 20 millimeters from what it is out of factory. But this thing is literally a go-kart with a shell. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. She just revs out so quickly and that supercharger lets it do it so goddamn easily. It's a drug, there's no other way to describe it. This thing is a drug. You have all the consequences afterwards, but while you're enjoying it, you are on such a high in this car. All your sensations are literally at 11 tenths. It just eggs you on so much to drive harder and harder in this thing. And the great thing about it is though, you don't have to drive it too hard. We'll see here, I'll just rev it out to 6,000 RPM and that's enough. It's got a few more grand in it, but there's really no need. Even though there's no need and it's unnecessary, fuck it, let's do it. Eight thousand RPM, you rev it out, you get that pop, 
It's oh. absolutely amazing. I always say I love cars that have theatre. And this thing here, theatre, say that it has theatre, does not do it justice. This is an action movie on IMAX. Full surround sound. It is a full serving of wasabi with a grain of rice. It's, it's got the looks. It's got the sounds. It's got the personality. But I tell you what, great personality. But oh my God, fucking crazy bitch. I'm in love. I'm in lust. I am... I'm obsessed with this thing. I am obsessed with it. Now aesthetic wise as well, Rodney has gone all out with this thing. So, carbon fibre. You like carbon fibre? This is the car for you. He has got a carbon fibre front lip, carbon fibre fuse covers that are on the hood there. Carbon fibre EKS side skirts. Carbon fibre scoops on the side of the car. Carbon fibre 2010 GT3 wing. Carbon fibre door cards here. Carbon fibre centre console. And if that wasn't enough, he's also got a carbon fibre cup holder. Out of the factory, this car was originally black. And when Rodney first got it, that's what it was. Afterwards, he ended up wrapping it in a 3M vinyl. It was magic purple, something like that. I am probably way off. This is what it actually was. And I reckon it was a really cool color. It was like a chameleon color. So change with the sun, change with the angles. Now he's actually done a full custom paint job, which he prefers the paint over the wrap because it really does have a lot of depth. Looks absolutely amazing when the sun's reflecting off it. And he actually painted this with his uncle as well. Now the color is based off a of Renault color and it's a uh, flame rouge red. But the red with all the carbon fiber bits on there, I reckon that it is a great contrast and it looks absolutely amazing. I really love what he has done with this car here. Okay, now we're on some twistier roads here. And this, this is really where this thing is gonna show me what it can do with its weight or their lack of. With all the carbon fiber bits he's put on here, Rod estimates that this car only weighs about 900 kilos as is. So let's create a little bit of a gap between me and him and see what this thing does around the corners. 7,000, 7,000 on the brakes. Those brakes are biting so bloody hard. Oh my God, it's, it is literally like a slingshot. It is propelling me to the next corner and it is egging me on so badly. This thing is such a bad influence, but it is so much fun. You know it's bad for you, but you want more. This thing's revs out so, so quickly, and it's got torque from the get-go. Because you've got the weight over those rear wheels, the absolutely amazing LSD in this thing, I am not getting any traction loss at all. And it is just so sturdy around these corners as well. You hear that supercharger whining, and you just want it to scream in your ear more and more. Oh my god! I actually can't believe this car and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. I'm not trying to give Rodney a big head but I did not know cars could actually get to this level of enjoyment. And I just, I want to experience it more. I don't want this drive to finish. Honestly, I am actually so happy and having so much fun right now. I literally have that light sensation before you get tears of joy. It is just an absolutely amazing experience. Literally only after a few minutes of jumping into this car, it was like it just brushed past my shoulder and I was already infatuated with it. And honestly, no matter what I say about it, I cannot do this thing justice. Now this is a very bold and controversial statement 
bed. I truly think that I have found the cure for depression and it's in this crazy little red pill that I'm sitting in right now. And how much dosage do you need? Well, as much as you want. And it will deliver. And it will make you feel great. And it will take away all your worries. This is truly an amazing little machine. And I just can not stop. I've been driving this car for a good half hour now and it's got no air conditioning. As I said before, I am sweating so much. My back is hurting so much between the suspension and the lack of padding in these seats. My voice is getting screechy because I'm having to yell to explain to you what this car is actually like over that whining supercharger. And I know tomorrow I'm going to have a headache. But you know what? I do not give a shit. This party right here is worth the hangover. This drug right here is worth the side effects. Is it something you can live with every day? Hell no. Is it something you can drive once a week for hours on end? Maybe if you're a little bit crazy, but oh my God, will it make you smile every time you get in it? 110%. I'm just under six foot tall. Not the shortest guy in the world, not the tallest guy in the world. But oh my god, there is no room in here. They call this a center console. It's just, it's a piece of material. It is not a center console. My leg is right up against the sills here. I'm squished in. Everything is so tightly packed in here. But the benefit of that is, you can see everything. You are so low. The A pillars don't distract you at all. It's almost on your side. Your field of vision is absolutely amazing in this car. Well, amazing besides that bloody intercooler behind you. I went to look and back up when I first got in this car and you can see approximately sweet fuck all through there. But all these things, all these drawbacks, it really does not matter. This car is about driving and giving you an experience. And that is what it gives you. It gives you an experience and it does a damn good job at it as well. Bit of an interruption here. Before getting a chance to film external driving shots another day, I received devastating news from Rod. Whilst working on the car, he hadn't realised he had lost a bolt in the intake, and that in turn damaged a supercharger. Thankfully, there was no damage to the engine, and the issue was isolated. He plans to put a fresh charger on the car in time, but for now, it's in hibernation. External driving shots in this video were some he had laying around, so at least we had something to work with. Hey everyone, my name's Rodney and this is my 2007 Lotus Exige S. I've owned it two years now, um, always wanted one since they first come out, absolutely loved them, loved the style. So I um, asked the missus if I could have one, the boss, and, and she said no, so she went to work the next day and I flew up to Sydney and I bought one from Lotus Sydney, or um, drove it home when she was at work, 10 hour drive, it's pretty fun. Um, told her when I did get it home, she's seen it, that I wouldn't modify it and that lasted a day, then I modified it, I changed everything I could. Um, but yeah, absolutely love it, absolutely love everything about it, changed what I didn't like. The only thing I don't like now, I guess, is the sound. I wish I'd have got the V6, spent the extra, but still a beautiful car, I absolutely love it. Um, am selling it though, looking to buy the first gen Gallardo. I like the sound, I like the noise, I like the way they look. Um, maybe a Z06, heaps of options, but yeah, for now, I'll just enjoy it and, and that's it. So, hope you like it. Well, everybody, that wraps up another episode of Talk the Talk. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Rodney. No, I can't thank you. Once I get out the car, I'm going to give you a huge hug. This was just too good to say it through words. Thank you so much. This is really 
open my eyes up to what the pinnacle of a driving experience really is. And I hope that I can learn more about amazing cars like this as well. For you guys at home, hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. Not that you would, it'd be impossible. Until next time, keep well, drive safe, but as usual, be a little bit cheeky in between.